life You ever been inside a federal courtroom? You ever went to trial and for your life? Behind me, I hear a whole bunch of shots going off So I get down because I'm thinking about to come to the side And start, you know what I'm saying, shooting at me And I ain't got nothing on me at the time So basically what happened, they walked up to my door And opened my door You know what I'm saying, opened my door mm -hmm. Trying to get at me End up hitting her up we're talking about 41 year old Jobina Brown. She was shot and killed last night on the city's east side, and she was with her nephew, who she also manages, rapper T Grizzly. He got out of the SUV that they were in. Someone allegedly came up, started firing. He was not hit, but sadly, she was shot and killed. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. Detroit has seen its fair share of talent emerging from the city. They have a special sound that is different from the wave that's been going on. But coming out of some of its streets is like a losing battle. And one rapper that overcame all the BS is T Grizzly. Faced with illegal substances, the streets, and the passing of loved ones, he became seasoned in the trenches, nearly losing his freedom when a gun pointed to his head. To come from nothing to be one of the biggest out the D after nearly losing his life is as real as he gets. This is the T Grizzly story. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. With each generation coming up in Detroit, some rap greats are always born. M, Big Sean, Dage Loaf are just some of the popular names that had the industry in the chokehold. Now the next in line is keeping up the standard and bringing some of that new flavor to the pot. One in particular is Terry Wallace, AKA T Grizzly. T was surrounded by the trenches itself, trying to make it through a rough upbringing around alcoholics and addicts. It's no surprise that T Grizzly will begin mimicking the same behavior that was around him. From an early age, he was already developing savage traits and dabbling in the street activities. You know what I'm saying? I was selling and doing shit in elementary school, mm -hmm. and that was normal to me. The instinct just came natural to him, but that same instinct would get him in a world of trouble. It's not that T Grizzly was a goofy, bro was smart as hell, but he could only do so much being in the environment he was in trying to survive. He knew the streets, but tried his best not to slip from school and tried to keep his eyes on making it out of the hood. RTM, right, it's a gang in my hood, you know what I'm saying, but these are people that I grew up with, middle school, high school, right. but while they was running around in the streets, I was on something else. I was going to school and I was trying to get some money out the street. Right. I don't know what they was doing. I know what I heard, but I don't know what, what they was doing. Right. You feel me? But by me being with them, being in pictures with them, when I see them out, us being cool with each other, people would have thought that I was tied to it in some type of way. But there was only so long he could avoid altercations and getting sucked into hood activities. In fact, some situations got so sticky that he nearly didn't make it out. I'd have been in some steep situations for sure where I could have got finished. After high school, T. Grizzly seemed to get even more influenced by the streets. Given all that, Grizzly wanted better and still had enough sense to not slip from his education, even while going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ops in the trenches. Coming from one of the worst schools, T. Grizzly had to be tactical in order to make it out and be somebody. So he made sure to try to be cool with his teachers. That worked in his favor because they tried to push and help him and give him more attention. That's how he changed the game for his family. His teachers were really trying to see bro make it and got him before college prospects and the one college he signed up for he got accepted to, Michigan State University. That must have felt hella good being from the worst school around all the illegal substances and danger and beat the odds to go to college. The next was figuring out his major. T Grizzly knew one thing for certain, he wanted to be rolling in dough. So bingo, the light bulb went off and he decided to study financial accounting. The finance and accounting thing. I always went for stuff because I always knew I wanted to make some money. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wanted to live like a certain type of lifestyle. But before this moment came and his family could celebrate someone stepping out into the world for the better, tragedy struck back to back to back. T Grizzly's mom was sentenced to prison for 15 years for distributing that hard white. His pops was murked in the streets, his granddad who raised him passed, and his uncle fell victim to the same outcome. Four members, one in jail, three six feet under. Then one year, pops get killed, yeah. uncle get killed, and my uncle's like my big brother. Granddad died who raised me. Mama get locked up, sentenced to all this time. This one year, I'm like, damn, this shit crazy. Right. This sent Grizzly into a dark place, but somehow he stomached that hurt and still pushed on. And once my pops got killed, I feel like that was the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So basically, it's just like, shit still hurt, but I was already built for it. Damn. Before I even knew I was built for it. 
T Grizzly went on to college, but that came with its whole set of problems cause college ain't free and he's basically on his own now trying to make his dreams come true. So what'd he do? Yeah. He linked with a friend Jeremy Christopher Ford and they decided to hit dorm licks to secure the bag and man, I swear it came natural. No, but I was just broke. I was trying to do stuff. It was a lot of females up there. I was trying to go do internships. I needed some pay. I needed some money. T Grizzly went from just having 800 to being racked up with 10K in just two days. I had I ain't never had over like literally $800. I started breaking the rooms. I made like 10,000 in two days. It became like an addiction. The money and what came with it was too much to leave behind. I could have stopped for real, but I was just so... It was coming so quick, I'm like, I can't believe this. That was bro's downfall. The cops would realize the scheme and get on T Grizzly and them head, putting out images of the suspects and the missing items on campus. Bro was clearing out Hubbard Hall like he just lent his money and items to students and needed it back by Monday. They had all of it mapped out. They'd sneak into the rooms early, snagging phones, laptops, money, everything. Sure enough, the jig was up when somebody caught and ratted him out. You got caught doing that too? No, somebody told on me doing that. So you got caught. That means I got caught. Somebody else got caught and oh, told on me. I would have got away. Cops obtained as much as 10 bands in cash and 10K worth of stolen merchandise. Authorities reported to them hitting about a dozen licks over a 15-day period in 2014. Cops then put out a warrant for his arrest. T. Grizzly had a slight window of opportunity to get his facts straight. But what did Grizzly do? Bro went on the run and linked with some friends to hit an even bigger lick. Deep inside, he knew that's not what he really wanted to be on at that moment, but he didn't trust his instincts and follow through anyway. I knew when we first pulled up to that bitch that something <coughs> bad was gonna happen because he told me we about to go hit a jury store. It's a pawn shop that sell jury. You know, pawn shop buy, sell, and trade guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I know they got a gun in that bitch. Mm. Still did it. Didn't even want to do it. I'm going to just keep it a buck. I did not want to do that shit at all. They head out to Lexington, Kentucky to do a smash and grab at a jewelry store, but they were caught lacking and you wouldn't believe by who. T Grizzly and them loaded up with hammers and went into the store to carry out their plan. But before they could dip, one of the customers inside was pulled up and held bro at gunpoint until the cops came and placed them under arrest. Man. They called me, listen, a customer had pulled out a gun. He had a CCW. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, you ain't got nothing to do with this. This ain't the way. <laughs> T. Grizzly would pick up a law book while fighting his case behind bars, stepping his knowledge up and gaining the knowledge to help cut his sentence down from 10 to 30 years to serving three. Bro turned into T. Grizzly at law. With the finish line to look forward to, he stood 10 toes down behind bars, earning his name Grizzly for his wild and aggressive nature in the pen. So how'd you get the name T. Grizzly? I got it when I was in there. In jail? Yeah. They was just calling me Grizzly, though. They weren't calling me T. Grizzly. Like Grizzly Bear? Yeah. It's kind of a weird name to have in prison, man. No, because, I mean, you aggressive. You oh, be yeah, yeah. So aggressive. You had the fighting stuff when you was in there? Yeah. In 2016, he would be a free man, and it was time for a change. After nearly losing it all, rap became his focus. Before this, he was a part of the rap group All Stars Ball Hard with his childhood homies. Now, fully focused, he was T Grizzly and ready to take the world by storm. He released a viral hit that put him on the map that he wrote behind bars first day out. The song even got recognition from major cultural influences like Jay-Z and LeBron James. Hit the rolling stone with the rodeo. Tag portfolio. T Grizzly took the Detroit street sound international and with it he gained fans in places he never thought he would. Did you expect it to get that big? Did you I expect didn't, me to support it? Man, listen, I thought that was just gonna be some like Detroit stuff. Cause you know, that was the Detroit sound. That don't usually make it out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So when that blew up, it was like magic. That was like seeing magic. T Grizzly was up. That went from prison to BET. But his probation had his true potential in a chokehold. Being on house arrest and getting bookings or wanting to go somewhere to perform, he had to jump through hella hoops to make that happen. Most times not able to do anything because of his house arrest restrictions. His auntie, JB, who was the only one who believed in him, quit her job to become his manager and CEO of Grizzly Gang Music. She was at the forefront handling business like a real one should, doing her best to push his career even further despite restrictions. Sadly, on August 20 of 2019, the Ops tried to hit T Grizzly, but instead ended up taking the life of his auntie. And that's crazy. Also, shots fired into an SUV, killing the manager and family member of a popular Detroit rapper. T Grizzly, her, and his driver pulled up to his cousin house, but his auntie stayed in the car. 
Next thing he heard while at the door of the house was shots ringing off behind him. T Grizzly ducked down until his cousin got the strap and then they headed out to retaliate. My cousin ran out with the gun or whatever. And we ran out in the to see what's going on. And to if somebody up on us, we gonna get them off us. Turns out the ops opened the car door thinking it was him. Saw it wasn't and still pulled the trigger. JB was hit up along her side, ironically the same side she was shot at in the past, but survived. This time though, her injuries were too serious and she passed away at the hospital. T Grizzly had to deal with all of that anger and her eating him up inside while everybody was blaming him for being the one that got her murked. Of course, of course revenge was in my head. My, my people was telling me I gotta be emotional. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't just act, you can't just act on it. You know what I'm saying? Let the police handle it. So I just let the police handle it. Family-wise, what was was anybody blaming you? Yeah, they blame me because they feel like it should have been me. Everyone at that point who even rubbed T Grizzly the wrong way became a suspect. Who I, I felt like everybody was a was a um, suspect. Mm -hmm. I felt like everybody was a suspect. So even if a person wasn't a suspect, if I didn't like that person, it was it was it was escalated. My dislike for them was escalated times ten. Mm -hmm. T Grizzly lost his heart. JB was the one that embraced him since small, allowing him to spend time in her house, and they built a strong bond. She believed in him and his dreams and supported him every time. T Grizzly released a dedication to her letting all his emotions go about her passing in the song Sadish. It was a rough point in time for T Grizzly, but there was some ray of joy the following year when both his brother and moms was released from prison. His brother Marcellus Wallace, aka Baby Grizzly, was released in October of 2020 after serving five years for armed robbery. Brody, what's up, bro? What's up, blood? What's up, gang? What's up, boy? And his mom's was released in December 2020. The Grizzly gang was back together, and it was good for T, given how much he had lost. Things were finally looking up. His music was popping, and his family was free. But it's like life was always putting Grizzly through the most. Just a few months after the gang was reunited, his bro was indicted on a federal gun charge. On December 8, 2020, baby Grizzly Whip was pulled over with law officials found alcohol, Mary Jane, and a 45 caliber gat, along with another homie who was in the whip, Nolo. T Grizzly just got his bro back and had to say free bro again. It seems with the success, the pain, and the loss always tries to bring bro down. And not just that, his name has been called up in many serious beefs. One of which allegedly involved a shootout with one of hip hop's biggest rappers, NBA Youngboy. By now, the May 2019 attempted hit on YB in Miami is worldwide, but when it first happened, the news reported that the altercation was between YB and T Grizzly. T Grizzly would later get on an interview to address the allegations and basically just answer by saying, when you're from the hood, those type of situations follow you. Obviously, like we see the media and the rumors coming up. They had the, the NBA young boy thing and they throwing your name in there with the yeah. rumors and stuff like that. How do you just adjust to that and just kind of being able to stay away from shit? I feel like when you from that shit, when you, I said this in a song too, when you come from that shit, it follow you. T Grizzly has also lost friends to the fame. His past homie Sada Baby that he was tight with later had a falling out when he felt that T was doing him dirty when he signed under his label. I broke down this beef in detail in the video I did for Sada Baby vs. 42 Doug's beef, so you can check that out. T Grizzly continues to reach into higher fame, getting into multiple businesses and investments along with being dubbed one of the dopest storytellers out. His catalog of music continues to grow across multiple hits and projects. Hopefully he's able to reunite with his bro and stay out of trouble and just enjoy his come up as best he could. T Grizzly came from the bottom and living a life often thought impossible for somebody from the trenches. His life is both a success and a tragedy. But one thing that I think we can learn from this all is perseverance and determination, man. Because as you can see, nothing's stopping him. And if he can do it, I know you can too, man. Just stay smart, stay alert, and stay real.